Hey son, hey son, and welcome to this second video of our new series where we make a Java game. Today we will implement the game loop, and I have been googling a little bit to see what options we have. So apparently there are, of course, many options, but the main ones seem to be variable time steps, semi-fixed time steps, and fixed time steps. And what I've decided to go with is a fixed time step. And what that means is that we define a certain interval where we update, basically. So uh, let's say that we want to update 60 times per second. Then that would mean 0 0.016 uh, seconds between every update. And we make sure that our game actually updates exactly 0 0.016 seconds apart and whatever time is left outside of that it can spend on rendering or whatever else it might want to do but our game will update 60 times per second let's just get to it let's just make the game loop yeah let's go ahead let's make this class and let's just call it a game loop okay so first of all, we want this game loop to, sorry, implement runnable. And we want this because, well, we are going to be running it within a thread. So let's implement the run method. We are going to want a couple of, let's just make a private Boolean running. All right, and we also want the update rate. So private final double date rate. Let's just do that. Uh, 1.0. So per second, we want 60 updates. I think that's enough for me, really. Um, if you are going to do some like physics calculations or whatever, maybe you want uh, more updates per second. I'm not sure that I am going to. So I think 60 updates per second will be enough for me. All right, uh, let's go into the run method. So the first thing we want to do is set running to true because we just called run. And we want to make an accumulator, which will basically just keep track of, sorry, of the time it takes uh, to update. Let's keep have some variables that keeps track of what time it is now and what time it is when we last updated. Okay, and let's just say that while running, so this is the actual game loop. This is just some setup before we get to the game loop and now we're looping, we're inside the game loop. Let's just set the current time is now the system.currenttime milliseconds. And let's make a last render time in seconds. All right, so current time minus last update, and then turn that from milliseconds into seconds. And just make it a double so it actually divides properly. Now let's say a Q, sorry, new later. Uh, and let's add that last render time in seconds to our accumulator. Um, and last update is now current. Okay, let's say this while accumulator is larger than the update rate, then we want to actually update. <laughs> and we also want to take away the time, the interval for updating from our accumulator. Um, and then we'll evaluate again. Uh, now that we took away one update, um, is it still larger? Should we still update once more? And this might happen if uh, the render takes a really long time. All right, and then render with whatever time we have left. And I'm thinking that's it. Let's just generate these methods. Oh, sorry. There we go. Okay. So now we have our render and update methods. And I think this should be it 
for our game loop. But for the fun of it, we want to see some statistics, right? We want to see our updates per second and we want to make sure it's working. So let's just start by making a method that will keep track of this. Yes, but we will need some variables that can be reached from here. For example, we actually need a long that will store, let's say, the next uh, stat time. And we also need some counters, so the FPS and the UPS uh, updates per second. All right, um, so what we want to do is before we start running the loop, let's just set this to one second from now. And then we are running, we do, we get to the update. So let's do actually increment our update per second in render. Let's increment our render per second. And in print stats, we actually check if the current time is larger than what we said would be the next time that we print the statistics, then print the statistics, right? So um, I usually use string.format and let's say frames per second, which is a digit, and updates per second, which is a digit, namely FPS and UPS. Awesome. And uh, let's also clear these and reset next stat time. All right. I think that's it. Um, nothing will happen though if we press play now because we have not run this inside of a thread yet. So make a new thread with a new game loop. Okay and then start, not strat, start it. All right, let's try it out. And look at that. It is updating, oh, there was a one. I don't know if that's a problem. I have no clue. It's probably not a problem, at least not for uh, us. I don't think my game will do anything super duper like it doesn't have to be exactly exactly it does look quite stable anyway definitely enough <laughs> and look at this rendering these fps's oh my gosh yeah it's not going to be looking like that once we actually render stuff but hey we have a game loop that's awesome unfortunately our window is now gone but we'll fix that in the next video all right Thank you for watching, and if you have any tips or any advice, please write it in the comments. I gladly take help. Hey, though.